But there was like the, the typical tropes that a lot of people talk about when dating somebody who is like American or white. For example, the shoe thing. Uh -huh. The shoe thing was a weird thing. What was that? Like she just, shoe? she didn't understand it. Shoe thing? Like uh -huh. us taking off our shoes oh, before we walked in. taking into... off shoes? Yeah, like she didn't understand it. Oh. And, and, and the funny thing was, it's not a problem. I wasn't upset or yeah. anything. But from a person who grew up his whole life taking off his shoes, going into a house, having your shoes in the house is fucking disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking dis In five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. We have Ed Park VP here again today. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Did you hear about fucking uh, Tiger Woods? Yeah. He got into like a major fucking car accident. Like right down south of here, right? Pals there it is or something yeah or some shit i don't know what happened i heard he got in a car crash with a hyundai for like a hyundai what it was like some kind of hyundai event oh my goodness really yeah. so he was driving a brand new hyundai suv or some shit and he got fucked up pretty bad oh like the genesis suv yeah i think it was oh, the genesis suv dude, actually that's bad <laughs> bad publicity yeah. <laughs> i'm sorry i mean we we care for tiger too yeah. we're all being korea pride right now <laughs> Oh my gosh. So what part of the car? Yeah. <laughs> Who comes? I know it's a very bad for a Korean look. Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, his leg got shattered into pieces. Fuck. He was trying to go to the Masters this year again. Um, I last saw him like he was doing some charity with his son, who's also a prodigy. Jesus, oh, it's dude. like I think his son's going to have to continue his father's legacy. You know what the hard part about that is, man? Like these people who are just born winners yeah they don't know how to do anything else besides win yeah and you yeah. just strip that away from him from a from a car accident not yeah. because of old age not because father time took it away from him because of a fucking car accident and even like um in sports like when you get released right yeah you see all these jocks having no idea what to do after they they have to be forced to retire or something right yeah i saw uh so uh, I'm a big Seattle Mariners fan. Like I grew up uh, watching baseball up there, and we had the second baseman just roided out. The guy named Brett Boone, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, my friend, when I was going out to uh, Art Institute. He was a bouncer on the like just that night at some bar, and he said Brett Boone had came in and was just drunk as hell, and he's like, "Fuck this place and fuck whatever." I'm Brett Boone. <laughs> And then he, they kicked him out of the bar and he dropped his pants and just peed with his butt crack hanging out in the middle what of the, the downtown Seattle. And then like his escorts put him in a car and then he drove away. Next day he was released from the team. Oh my yeah. God. And then dude. on the news, he's like bawling his eyes out, crying and stuff. Like Makes me wonder what the fuck was somebody like that going through? Yeah, he like his whole personality is just being a jock and super cocky. Mm -hmm. And he was doing bat flips like 20 years ago before bat flips were cool, you know? Really? Yeah. And like usually you're not supposed to do that or they're going to bean you. But then he's super roided out. Yeah. And then he just, I think because of like Jose Canseco's book, his numbers just burr because he had to stop taking steroids, right? Mm. Got released. And that, that whole, you can imagine that athletic psyche of guy who used to hit 40 home runs a year can't hit it out of the infield well today's topic is going to be interesting so one of the things that uh people have been asking about is like i feel like a lot of people like dating experience stuff right yeah yeah, yeah. and um i i think for me growing up i i only pictured myself with like an asian girl right like i grew up in a very korean household maybe not so much a korean girl but some some girl that was asian yeah well, after I got dumped the first time, I'm like, you know what? Just try dating people. Yeah. Like, just try dating anybody and everybody. And so one of the biggest misconceptions is that people have thought that I've never dated a white person before. Mm -hmm. And I have. I've actually dated one white girl before. Yeah. Just one. <laughs> right? And it was such a interesting experience, right? I have relatives. Like, my... my uh, Cousin Jason, he's married to a white girl, right? Yeah. She's dope. She's she's fucking dope. Like she's super cool. I, I love her to death. You know, so in, in my mind, it's not like I haven't seen it in my family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, same here. I think I have like a second cousin with like a white wife. And my dad's cousin um is also half white, half Korean. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's not irregular in our family, especially if you're around Tacoma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was it was it's just one of those weird things where like I, I'm not sure if this was for you, but 
I feel like Asian dudes always have this odd perception of like an Asian guy dating a white girl it makes them feel like you won or something. Ah, uh, yeah, you, you I've know heard what that. I mean. Like that's the like, prize. Oh, you, that's a trophy like you nab the white girl. It's like what does that mean? Yeah. With the, I don't understand why that's so special. Like what what's so special about that? I'm not shitting on white girls. I'm just saying like I think we were told growing up like because of everything we saw in media and magazines was the Cindy Crawf- Crawford blonde bombshell yeah but those girls thing, right? that's not even like a race thing they're just fine as fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? it'd be fine as fuck and be anything it doesn't matter mm. you know but yeah i i but i've generally experienced the side where in high school um i was sitting in this keyboard class and i'm sitting between one of the girls that's considered one of the hottest seniors you know in the class and this guy that they call Stork, because he looks like a fucking Stork. What the hell? <laughs> His nose is like, you know, mm-hmm. so they call him Stork. And then I don't know, I forgot why the conversation got into this, but she basically said, he's way better looking than you. You know, this guy named Stork than me? His name is Stork? Yeah. And she's like, yeah, obviously, I, I, she told me to my face, he's way hotter than you. I would never date someone like you. And I was just like why am i ugly yeah that i had a i had one of those things in those times like where i did like actually first realized like they see us differently maybe mm-hmm. yeah like i had never thought i was ugly then <laughs> yeah 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 so that that's where i'm coming from where i saw a lot of guys like because my young's like gen x especially i think for them i heard that a lot like oh you got with a white girl get with a white girl and kind of stuff where it's like, man, um, I think there's a this fringe group. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of them, Asian I- identity. Like, the fuck is that corny ass shit? It's not good. Let's okay, just say. I'm not a fan of it. And Celebration. It, yeah, it's just <laughs> it's just little dick energy. Let's just say yeah. it, it bothers the fuck out of me. Kind of <laughs> thing where it's not helping us. You know, yeah, it's more or less it's more putting us in a box than anything, and just a lot of complaining about it. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah, but I generally growing up because of that experience was like, "Fuck you!" Then I'm never gonna date a white girl. Yeah, right. And so I generally spent most of my life dating other Asian women until I had to go back home. <laughs> and you just had to take whatever you could say, anything. <laughs> That's what. So I. I lose 100 pounds, and someone actually gave me shit. It was just like, why are you losing all this weight? Like, who for? Like, all these methods and crazy people out there. Yeah. And so, yeah, like, and the idea of settling down, you know, in the middle of nowhere kind of had to become a reality. And if I'm going to stay here for a long time, like, I got to be with somebody, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I look towards settling. But what about you? Where did you? Well, for me, it was when I when I was in college, I I started dating whoever and whatever, right? Yeah. Like the idea of being rejected, I became really comfortable with it. Oh, okay. So you know, you would try to mac on some girls, hit on them. You know, obviously the sloppy little fat Asian dude, <laughs> but I was a funny dude. Yeah. So I, you know, spark up a conversation at a bar or whatever, and I got rejected a lot. But anybody who did say yes, it was like, I got you, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, it's my yeah. lucky. Yeah. It's my lucky day. No, but we um there was a girl who was in I went to a community college called Consumnus River College out in Sacramento. Yeah. And in these classes, they're relatively small. It's, it's a community college. So you know, sparking up a conversation with somebody was relatively easy. And there was this girl, and I wouldn't even say she was like completely she's not she is white American, yeah, but she was Polish. Right. So she had like she obviously didn't speak the native language from where she's from. But yeah. she's like first generation. Her parents came here or okay. whatever, whatnot. Or she's like second gen or first gen. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Okay. So, you know, that was my first experience, right? But it was so weird because I think because she grew up so white American and Asian American experiences are so different. I I, I had a lot of trouble uh, connecting with her on a lot of things. Yeah. Just because she grew up in not, like a loving household. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> she, grew up, she grew up with like positive reinforcement yeah. and all this weird shit. You I was, can be anything you want. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what kind of fucking stupid shit is that? <laughs> but there was like the, the typical tropes that a lot of people talk about when dating somebody who is like American or white. For example, the shoe thing. Uh-huh. The shoe thing was a weird thing. What was that? Like she just, sh- she didn't understand it. 
Shoe thing? Like us taking off our shoes oh, before we walk in. Oh, taking off shoes? Yeah, like she didn't understand it. Oh. And, and, and the funny thing was, it's not a problem. I wasn't upset or yeah. anything. But from a person who grew up his whole life taking off his shoes going into a house, having your shoes in the house is fucking disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking disgusting. Yeah. Not even on a cultural level, right? Yeah. Common sense level. You could be walking any on anything anywhere, right? Like, you, you're going to walk around downtown LA and put those filthy fucking shoes on my floor? Yeah. <laughs> like, Are you fucking leave them out? How am I going to do yoga? Like, yeah. <laughs> Are you fucking nuts? Yeah, sometimes you feel like like they have this entitlement to keep their shoes on for some reason. Yeah. It's like, why are you, what are you talking about? Is it because your feet smell? Bitch, yeah. wash your feet then. The fuck are you doing? Stop with this men buy shit, dude. Stop wearing your <laughs> boots with just no socks. But yeah, I, I remember I was explaining to her. I'm kind of like, yeah, I think it's kind of weird like wearing shoes in the house. She's like, well, why? I'm like, uh, like you could have stepped in shit and you're just yeah. it all. They said, well, you could always just like, you know, wash the floor. And I'm like, like, or you could never be in that situation ever. Exactly. <laughs> and I remember too, just having this conversation and I wouldn't say it was irritating. It was just kind of odd that I had to explain to her before she came into my place, why she has to take off her shoes. Like number one, bitch it's my fucking house. Yeah. That's why you don't need to know anything else. The only thing you need to know is that in this house, my rules, yeah. take off your fucking shoes. Now make sweet love to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the, like, so at a young age in college, I was at um, this bar and yeah, it's an Asian bar. So there's generally Asian people and I would just talk to Asian women. And one day there's this white girl there and she's drunk, but she's like talking. She's like, you know, I only date Asian guys. What are you? I'm like, I'm Korean. Oh, my last boyfriend was Korean, right? And then I'm like, oh my God. I'm an Anyang Hase. Yeah, this is my lucky day, <laughs> right? But then I, I, I heard it on the flip side. Like, um, for us, we we're like, this is so fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. for, uh, but then apparently, when Asian girls, like, if, an, if a white dude was like, oh, I only date Asian girls, it's my last creepy. one is creepy, right? But for me, I was like, yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so when I had matched uh, with this girl online and I drove fucking two hours out to just see her because that's how far away I was. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she was white and she wanted to go to chap the teppanyaki. Mm -hmm. And... Um, She's like, Here's, I love Korean food. Yeah, that's like, that's kind of what the flavor was, where it was like she was more interested in Asian shit, yeah. right? <laughs> About the conversation we were getting into and getting more into the food. She wanted to learn Korean. And then she was like, she goes, oh my God, have you heard of Just Kidding Films? Like hilarious. Bart and Gio. She goes, I, I love them. Like they're like my favorite, like favorite, like Asian uh whatever it's like geo's mexican bitch <laughs> <laughs> she was just like i i didn't even mention that i i knew them yeah like, during the date but then i told her later that you yeah. actually know them or whatever yeah. and then it started like her fanness came out mm -hmm. or fandom but then also i started seeing like how she only like she didn't like the music i listened to and the only music she wanted to listen to around me was k-pop she only wanted to watch shit that you don't listen to. Yeah, <laughs> she only wanted to watch K dramas. She like, only wanted to watch Korean movies, and only wanted to eat Korean food. And I was kind of feel, understanding this fetishization, let's say, out of it. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that weird though? Now, like, where I say it's it's depending on the perspective of certain kids, right? Because like when we grew up, there wasn't much of any Asian thing that was considered cool yeah at all yeah you know nothing was cool nothing for us. nothing was cool at all like chops like the fact chopsticks were weird eating seaweed is weird e eating now you see that shit at costco yeah. and then now i have a white person coming up to me like yeah. bro do you, do you <laughs> yeah, bro, have you tried seaweed before it's <laughs> like <laughs> so, hey sheep secky i know exactly yeah. what that is dude that's fucking kid food bitch get the fuck yeah. out of my face you know but now it's like in this era where it's weird how small Korea is and the the amount of influence this small little yeah. country has over the whole fucking world. This K-Wave thing. They exported culture. Yeah. Amazing. 
Like the only other country that did that was America. Yeah. <laughs> the movies. It's right? fucking nuts. And I'll say something about K-pop that might not be so great. And then I have a white person. How dare you speak about Korean yeah. people that way? I'm like, first of all, you're not even talking about Korean people. You're talking about a very specific genre. Yeah. Of of like a very small genre of what Korean people are. It's like yeah. this music that we've exported out to you that you guys eat like it's fucking candy. Yeah. You yeah. know. And so, um, in my when I was starting to see that. Before we continue with this podcast, let's talk about one of our great sponsors, Better Help. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, my friends? Well, guess what? That's a lot of us. But with Better Help, you can get the counseling and the help that you need from the comfort of your home. Better Help will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. And no, it is not a crisis line. It is not self-help. It is professional professional counseling done securely online. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. So don't wait, my friends, and make sure that you help yourself to some better help. You'd be surprised how much counseling and therapy will help you out. It's helped me a ton, and I am happier today than I was two or three years ago, even though I told myself I was happy. So remember, my friends, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Genius Brain listeners can get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash genius. Once again, that's betterhelp.com slash genius. B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash genius. Yeah, she just kind of, I just kind of felt like a dildo. Let's just say that. Mm. <laughs> it's like, hey, are you going to like dye your hair blonde or something? Or yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> like, am I going to take care of my skin? You just uh, wake like, up, you have glitter on your yeah. fucking, uh, <laughs> glitter on your face. It's just like, what the fuck is this? I just want you to look different. That's all. Did she have a problem like this white girl with the food you're eating or any of that? Shit oh, she didn't want to eat any of the food. What? Yeah. I mean, I don't think she was very open. Okay. But this is what I'm talking about. Well, cu- culturally things become a little weird, right? Mm. Where... It's not like I, I, she wasn't a bad person or anything else yeah. like that. She just wasn't really open to food. She wasn't really open to anything else. Like, it's almost like she wanted to separate me as a person and my culture. It's like, that doesn't, <laughs> we all come in a package. It's yeah. everything. My parents come in a package, everything else, right? It's not like I was hyper serious about dating this girl, but who knows, right? She was really cool. She was super fucking funny and I enjoyed being around her. But that was the weird part where it was almost like when we had these conversations, it felt like she just wanted to date david minus the korean part it's because she never thinks of herself as her the white girl <laughs> yeah 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 she, like uh, white americans don't ever have to think about being white yeah at all ever like right? this is the norm this is how yeah. everybody it's like, is why do you keep thinking about being asian it's like because everyone around me reminds me <laughs> that i'm a chink yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem i had with my my ex was when i would share these fucked up stories that was happening to me at the store Mm -hmm. like at first it was very consoling like i'm sorry i can't believe that happened then it turned to eye rolling and okay ed like i know you don't like it there like okay like eh. and i was just kind of getting the feeling like she didn't want to hear about any of this shit like yeah but this is happening to me because i'm asian yeah and you love everything about me because i'm asian but you won't like like stand up for me yeah. in the situation well it's because everybody likes to pick and choose what they like about a culture right yeah so that's like typically what a lot of uh, black americans feel it's yeah, like you right. get to imitate our culture you get to love our music our style the, the way that we say things everything else but when we're in trouble and some real shit happens you go well that's because you're lazy it's yeah. like well, well hold on a yeah. second <laughs> like you specifically want to only take apart the stuff that you enjoy but you know it makes people feel used and very dirty yeah you know like you it sucks did you ever have a problem where she just didn't relate to you like culturally or like race wise because of that i think like the only thing that that was very odd was like our uh, there's something about somebody who didn't grow up around a culture outside of yours where you don't feel connected with them Mm. right you feel like this odd distance you know whether it's about social subjects or just things that you like aside from us like hooking up and like joking around and having fun you know drinking with each other other than that there wasn't any substance behind it right yeah and it goes down to breaking it it breaks down to even like uh how you solve situations or how you how you're around people and Uh, friends yeah right Those, those small little things like for example one of the things that i noticed and um that was different about her compared to the other asian girls that i would date she was very vocal about stuff that 
um, she didn't like or didn't want to do, despite the fact that a group of people were down to do something, right? Mm. There wasn't this idea of a collectivism. <laughs> and I think that that's what Asian people have a lot, yeah, right? Yeah. So for example, let's say me, you, uh, Paul, Khalif, or whatever, there's like five or six of us out there, right? And you guys are, oh, let's go, let's go drink at uh, Cafe Blue. And you guys are yeah. all hyped. And I go, nah, I'm not going to go. <laughs> right? Let's go somewhere else. I, most likely I wouldn't do that. I'd be yeah. like, oh, if everybody's down, fuck it. Let's just go there yeah. and let's see if we can go somewhere else. Right? And that's usually what would happen. But with her specifically, it was like she always had to be vocal about what she said and her opinions always felt like facts. Yeah. And I didn't like that. I'm not saying, I'm not sure if this is a white person thing. I think it's a very yeah. American thing. Yeah. You know, where it's like your opinions are facts. Not just, <laughs> it's, not, it's not just your specific thought. Yeah. It's like, this is what it's I say. Like objective this is, truth. Exactly. And that yeah. shit used to irritate the fucking shit out of me. Yeah. And at that point too, it's like you, there's something off about us. Like culturally things aren't really meshing well. And the opinions being facts thing is the thing that irritated me the most. I, I felt close to that. I mean, that's pretty much why we broke up. Like, it, it was a big shit show. So, um, I was, I like I said, I explained to her about the situation I get into and the racism I face, mm -hmm. right? And and more and more, she's getting disconnected with that shit. And one day, she actually visits me at the store. You know, she takes the road trip. Like, bless her. You know. And um, she's sitting behind the counter with me. And guess what? All these customers that can be really shitty are so nice. So nice to this girl mm -hmm. behind the counter. You know? And they're really like, hey, you did good. You did girl good because mm -hmm. I'm with this girl and whatever. But this guy comes up to me and I'm listening to hip hop, right? Just mm -hmm. on my Bluetooth speakers. And then uh, this guy comes up and he's like, what's up, you like brown music? You know? What the I'm fuck? I'm like, what? Like, he's like, what, you, you like listening to hip hop? I'm like, yeah, why not, <laughs> right? Yeah. He's man, you soft. You're a bitch. I'm like, this is out of nowhere, seriously. And my, my girl is just sitting right there. She's watching this whole thing go down. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like why, why, dude? Yeah. He's like, I'm like, what did I do to you? Yeah. And he goes, fuck you, man. Fuck you. He just starts shit with me out of the blue. And I'm like, I take his kombucha and I'm like, you know what, dude? Just get out. Yeah. And leave. He goes, fuck you. I'll fuck you up. Dude, man. I would have looked at him and was like, I'm soft? You're buying kombucha, bitch. <laughs> exactly. How fucking I'm dare gonna... you call me soft? And you're over here drinking fermented probiotics, yeah. you fucking pussy. That was the irony of it, honestly. <laughs> I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. Were you from LA? Yeah. <laughs> he is. So he's trying to fight me in front of my girl and all is going to until I just tell him to get the fuck out and just leave. And I finally look at her and I'm like, see, you see this? This is my life. Yeah. And she goes, all I saw was two idiots fighting. You know, what the fuck? is? And I was like, you don't get it. Yeah. You don't get it. Mm -hmm. And she started crying. She started crying. She goes, fuck you. Fuck you, what? Is it because I'm white? And I'm like, yes. Yeah. And she goes, fuck you. Why don't you go back to Korea? And I'm like, here's me calling out your white privilege. Yeah. And here's you telling me to go back to a country I wasn't born in. <laughs> it's, it's so funny, too, because when you, when you look at that, she goes, I just see two idiots fighting. I was like, he literally said, what, you like that brown music? Yeah. Saying the most racist shit ever. He basically said, you like black people music? Yeah, you know? he was. He was saying it straight up, like black people music, brown music. You like that stuff? And that shit is shit because black people, make, like it's it's already there, you know? But they're like, you don't see that as anything racial, even though he literally brought color in there? Yeah. And That's so she, odd. And it was arguments like, maybe you should have been listening to something else. Like, like dude, dude, dude. Do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, third eye blind, right? Yeah, like what the fuck did you want? Like, why do I have to change myself to make you feel comfortable? Yeah. That's the odd thing, too. Like, even that statement's very weird, you know? Like, why didn't you change what you were listening to make him feel comfortable? Why do I have to? Yeah. Why? It was all these things. She kept telling me this advice to submit constantly. And I'm yeah. like, I don't think you understand a Korean man. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not going to do that shit for anybody. But it's even for her in her case, right? It's if 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 we talk about another type of situation, right? It's like when we when we talk about women who are, you know, 
sexually assaulted, yeah. right? Because of the way that they dress. And if I told her, it's like, she had to wear a longer skirt. Yeah, victim blame. That. You know, why don't I victim blame you, bitch? Yeah. Like, that's not how it works. It's it's not how it works at all. There's no empathy in that shit. You're not looking at, she's not even looking at you as a person at that point. And she, that was the weird part is like, I think you just like all this shit about my culture, but you're trying to tell me to deal with my problems the way you do and just erase the culture right yeah <laughs> erase the color out of me yeah you re- erase that culture attitude mm-hmm. you know and here's the thing like she is from the appalachian trail like which is you know that east coast mountain range mm-hmm. and so that's like kentucky north carolina kind of area shit and her going out to the middle of nowhere where i am <laughs> is a <laughs> dream come true for her holy shit that's so funny she loved it and Dude, she wanted a horse. <laughs> she she loved horses. She was just like looking at the this yard we have, this big property we have at our store. She's like, she wants to have a horse. She wants to ride horses. She wants to go, like <laughs> things I don't know. You what know? in the fuck? She goes, I got a dream. <laughs> you know where that trailer is parked? I could picture my horse right there, just galloping away every day. Seriously. And she kept talking about like this future we would have together and yeah getting married and spending my the rest of my life out there running the store with her and my little half white kids and i thought about that and just thought about how much i would resent that life a hundred (laughs) percent yeah that'd be really fucking weird like you want me to come home every night exhausted from people assaulting me and you're gonna tell me to just pull my bootstraps up yeah (laughs) my wife All I saw yeah. were two fucking idiots. It's fine. And then I was like, <laughs> and yeah, that's pretty much where we had to end it. Because I was like, you keep talking about getting married and you want to move out here. And I would resent that so yeah. bad. And she said, what do you want to do? Move back to LA? I said, yeah. Yeah. With yeah, a bunch exactly. of those queers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yep. I love exactly, me queers. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. That's what I want to do. And she was fine. Oh broke up and and now i'm here in la so that's fucking crazy man like i i wouldn't even know how to deal with it i gotta understand like how sad you were to even date somebody like that <laughs> i was desperate <laughs> serious face i was desperate yeah i d- didn't see a lot of people man yeah like and like i don't know as much as i would put myself out there um the only asians i was around was church people <laughs> yeah 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 and i really realized that's not the type of relationship i don't think i want to be in either yeah and uh, let me try uh, to look for this normal all-american relationship <laughs> i got what i got that's so weird too that she would say that even though she loves like quote-unquote korean culture and stuff yeah. right but she can't see it that way she wanted to like move in with me and my mom like i wasn't living with my mom at the time yeah you know and she wanted to move with my mom so she could learn Korean and learn to cook Korean food. And she wanted to work at the store and raise children, be a stay-at-home mom. Damn. I'm just looking at my life running a gas station. <laughs> Come on. Didn't that scare you? That would have scared the shit out yeah, of you. Yeah, it scared me. Like when you have these moments and you're like, this is all, this is what my life is? Yeah. That scares the fuck and out of me. And nobody's going, so far, no one has actually helped me from <laughs> any of these attacks, yeah. you know? And, um, being in this relationship although like i I feel loved and such Mm -hmm. um it definitely didn't have a bright future where if i i'm already calling out that i'm going to resent this that's a scary part when i when i was working at my parents store too and i remember my dad told me like so back in the day my dad would i would always work at the store right yeah and then my brother would never work there and so mm-hmm. later on, like, he told me it's because my, you know, my brother did really well in school. I was like, he has a really bright future ahead of him. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I'm like, yeah, what about me? Yeah. He goes, you were never good at school. So I made you come to the store because you have to make a living somehow. I'm like, hold on a second. That's how little you believed in me. The like, bar was so low. You like, how can you fail at anything else? <laughs> exactly. So he was thinking like, you're going to take over this weave store. Like yeah. that's as far as he thought my abilities were, you know? And I was like, fuck, like, if that was my life, just being in this store, you know, like I said, I'm very grateful that that, that store, you know, fed us, you know, yeah. put a roof over our head and everything else like that. 
But to think that that would have been my end goal would would have killed me on the inside. Yeah. Not not the part that I'm a business owner, but because I didn't have any of my own dreams where I could have made something achievable. So like, even as an artist, yeah, you think yeah, I think it would have killed me on the like, inside. Where would you have time to create? You know, I would have just create? changed the whole store. I probably would have called it like I don't know, I believe, yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I would have just you know done some really fun and crazy stuff with it. Yeah. But other than that, like I think I would have definitely lived a life where I would have regretted it. Like I, I wish I would have done something else. I wish I could have done better. This podcast is brought to you by ShipStation, my friends. If you are shipping anything out, if you deal with any type of e-commerce from home, you have to get Ship station it is literally my favorite way of shipping anything out because they consolidate everything and make it easy for me the seller no matter how much you sell ship station makes it super easy to manage and ship all your orders from all your sales channels faster cheaper and more efficiently you can import orders from any sales channel ship with any carrier access discounted shipping rates automate just about any shipping task, you'll spend a lot less time on shipping and a lot more time growing your business. It doesn't matter what you're selling. It could be on Amazon, Etsy, your own website, ShipStation funnels all your orders into one simple interface that can help you manage from anywhere, even your cell phone. If you are doing e-commerce, you do understand how amazing ShipStation is. And if you haven't used it before, it's going to change your life, specifically change your life by saving you freaking time use ShipStation. Ship more in less time. Just use my offer code GeniusBrain to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free of no hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in GeniusBrain. That's ShipStation.com. Enter offer code GeniusBrain and make ship happen. Mm. But thinking about that part scares me the most. Like that married with kids and like that's it like that's you're settled down there and that's but well, that was an original goal of mine when i was 20 something years old mm -hmm. all i thought about was my very first girlfriend marrying her mm -hmm. right having yeah. a house like in sacramento and then having a kids and family and this is i'm super young at this point yeah and that's all i thought about and i remember just uh after you know i got dumped and whatever whatnot and i'm like this is stupid like yeah. how, why why the fuck Okay, first of all, didn't you want to be a stand-up comic? Yeah. Like, who the fuck has a stand-up comic with a fucking family in Sacramento? What the fuck are you talking about, you yeah. loser? Nothing made nothing made sense. And then after that, like, the idea of settling settling down became very scary for me. Yeah. Like, I didn't want to settle down with anybody. Just because I felt like if I settled down and I had kids, I felt it was the end of my life. I felt, I felt the same, man. Yeah. I felt the same. But because, but how old were you when this was happening? You said 20. Around 20 is when I kind of realized all this shit. Yeah. I was 33. And it was like, mm -hmm. it's about time, right? Everyone's like pushing you. It's like, mm -hmm. finally, finally, and finally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. all saying that. Like, they're assuming I'm going to get married now. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was very daunting. Like, I actually, it gave me panic attacks. <laughs> yeah. And like, I don't want to do this I shit. I get scared now, man. Sometimes I wake up next to Mario's face. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, look, look at this face every day for the rest of my but life. Fuck. It, it wasn't about spending the rest of my life with her. It was just, it was, you know, the, the life at the store wasn't great. Yeah. You know, I was miserable there. Yeah, me too, man. That's what I meant. Yeah. She loved it, though. She loved being at the store. That's crazy, dude. And it was happy. Like, she's like, loved working there and stuff. Another man's trash is another person's treasure, dude. <laughs> That's really what it is. She enjoyed yeah. it, huh? Yeah. And everything seemed set up for me. To be honest, it was mm. just just present the ring, ask her, you know, and I, yeah, I I had a very bad breakdown. And wow. I had to go to her and just tell her like, I can't keep doing this, you know. How did she take that? Very bad. Uh, it was tough for her. Um, I feel terrible because she had to like skip work for a couple of days, you know. But she was young, you yeah. know, and in her mind, like I said, she's from the Appalachian. Like all her friends are already married with three kids mm. and she was 23 24 you know and she thought that her clock was running out i'm like do you have any idea how young you are yeah <laughs> like like i don't know how it is out there in the appalachians all but my friends have three kids yeah. they're, they're 18 years old and they already started their she life she was bon like 
do you understand? I'm like the last one like that still doesn't have kids. All my friends are married with kids. I was like, like your like, friends are fucking losers. Yeah, what else are they then? What are they doing? <laughs> like, you it's know? like you're the only one that's not a fucking loser, right? Like your life is more than just bearing children. You have a lot more potential. <sighs> that's not her dream. Her dream is to be a housewife in a small little town in the middle is, of nowhere. But the weird thing about that too is like, look, I'm not judging that life path. What I'm saying is like, it's not a very hard thing to to achieve to do nothing you get, you, <laughs> i mean okay let's not say that like not have a job but yeah she she let's literally just a guy can just no not inside you yeah and then you have a kid like it's not something you have to work that hard for she, she had no aspirations outside of being a mother full time which yeah. can be very beautiful like i said yeah. but it's kind of weird like she's talking about it as if her biological clock is ticking you're 23 24 i'm used to growing with all my friends with bachelor's degrees kind of yeah. thing you know not all my friends but like more than half you know and i don't recall if she graduated high school really yeah i don't think we mentioned it <laughs> like but i remember something where she had to be taken out of school because mm. of like she had been bullied you know as a child because she loved a bunch of chinks. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's probably what it yeah. is. But you like them fucking yellow skin gook motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> but she was an outcast. And apparently for these people out there, like going to the West Coast is like a big dream. It's That's the dream. Did you just go from one hillbilly town to another hillbilly town yeah, in the West Coast? But on the West Coast. <laughs> what the fuck? That's what she said. Like these Appalachian people, like because like West Virginia, all this shit, those mm. mining towns. Pff, yeah, like that's where she came out of. That's and nasty, ended up man. in like Seattle. Yeah. Well, that's the weird thing because when I was finding out about kind of um, how you know how we talk about ethnic diversity in this country, yeah. right? And I think because we live in these heavily populated uh, metropolitan areas for a majority of our life. We think that the cultural diversity that we've experienced growing up is reflected in the on the other parts of this country, and it's yeah. not. Yeah. Like when I found out that Asian people only make up five point six percent of this country, yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Damn, that's a little ass number, bro." It's very small. I thought it was a lot bigger than that. Yeah. I thought it was at least like ten, fifteen percent. Five point six percent, man. Now I understand. Like when you know Asian people are on social media, nobody sees that shit. Yeah, because it's like five point six percent, and then maybe like 05 percent is online you know right, right posting stuff on social media like that so now i can kind of see i'm like oh i, I it might not be because we're not loud enough it's just there's not enough of us so we need like other allies to speak for us right you know and so when i saw that number i was shocked it's like 5.6 percent man it's fucking nothing i feel I mean, like understand what it's like to be one percent <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> crazy because i don't know what that's like i've, I've yeah. lived every place that i've lived in i've seen people who look like me all the time i felt i felt extreme isolation you know growing up through high school and whatever and going back there for work it just feels lonely even if you're around as many white people you can at walmart yeah i just feel so isolated and alone <laughs> i don't know what it Dude, is i just want to meet this girl and just bring her to like a big city <laughs> like go to just go to seattle no she's scared she what's gonna like, happen a robot's gonna pick her up and then put him in his backpack like what the back, fuck yeah, is she scared of like she like even the idea of like like living in la is is just just like ah uh, like what does she yeah. think is gonna happen i have no idea like she comes from a very very small town you know out she just east. took her on the ferry and took her to seattle like hey you need to see the city. No, she, we did. We did. We would go and and like I, I'm more of a, the type that would love to live in the city. Yeah. No, nah, no. Nah, she wants to live very far away and have space for her horse and her bunnies and her dogs. <laughs> God damn, man. I mean, I think that's very admirable for somebody to find joy in the small things like that. Yeah. I cannot. Like, no, I, I need. Yeah. Me too. I, I want to go to the big city. I like concrete jungle. Mm -hmm. Um. But I've also met other dudes um, that were the complete opposite of me where they had a great paying job in Seattle and they just wanted to run the kage with their parents, you know, just take care of them. That's, that's all he wanted to do. He's a super dope, creative guy. And he, like, he just makes good money anyway just running this uh, poke shop and, and um, this little grocery store. You know, and I was like, 
maybe I should, you know, learn to be like him and like appreciate all this. And I try that, and these motherfuckers just don't stop fucking attacking me. <laughs> yeah, fuck that dude. Yeah. Like, I, I can't do that, man. Like, like I, I can be a business owner and stuff too, which is perfectly fine, which I am. But being at maybe it's because I grew up being in a business my whole life. I could see the repetition killing me on the inside. Yeah, you know the the repetitive stuff where every day feels like the same, and that's the part that scares me. Where every day feels the same, it's, it's like clock in, clock out, clock in, clock out. Because I'd rather just work with regular nine to five at that point. Why why be a business owner? But like, also that. also with the thought of I when I open the door, you know, like who's gonna start some shit with me today? Yeah, when am I gonna have my panic attack and anxiety attack? You know, and lose my shit. You know, yeah, that was the kind of situation where i was in th where i was finally like i can't do this every day people aren't supposed to stress out this bad every day people shouldn't be on their toes ready to be attacked every day Dude, that's how people lose their mind did you see that video clip of this guy i think it was out in pennsylvania uh -huh. where it was it was essentially two people that were arguing right so uh -huh. it was a couple that lived across the street from this other guy you saw that, right? Yeah. And I guess from what I read was that couple was shoveling their snow onto his driveway. Yeah. So clearly they've had something that was going on between them. We don't know what it is, obviously, from mm -hmm. what happened at the end result. We don't know why that happened, but that's not something that happens just in one day. Yeah. They've done this multiple times and maybe he's done it to them. It's like a back and forth thing. Yeah. So, you know, it starts off there yelling at each other and he's called, what, what was the adjective that he was calling him? He's like, you're a like nut job or something like that <laughs> yeah. or a weasel or something something really mild yeah. you know and then he's like screw you or whatever he's like you, no you are whatever and they're going back and forth back and forth the guy go back he goes back in the house yeah he had a fucking handgun and then let me tell you something <sighs> this is the craziest part about it the girl looks at him and she goes what are you gonna do yeah i think i saw that i remember that yeah she's, she's like, like What's up? she goes what are you gonna do you gonna shoot me i would never in my life, well, say that to somebody with a fucking gun. What is that kind of security? Where yeah. you have that kind of suburban American security like that, you're okay from a gun. I've never seen somebody point a gun and she goes, what are you going to do, shoot me? I'm like, yes, bitch, that's the objective. Yeah. And then he comes out, has his handgun, blasts her. Yeah. Like point blank and blasts the other dude, right? Here's the, now when you guys, if you guys ever see this clip online, it's pretty gruesome, right? Yeah. However, there's one part where I died laughing. <laughs> there, so he's like executioner style, blasting her in the head, right? Even as she's getting shot, that bitch is still talking shit. Oh my god! Did gosh. you hear the audio? No. She's no. like, she gets shot. I'm talking executioner style, right? Uh -huh. She's looking at this dude, still talking shit. What? As he put a bullet through her head, How? I'm like. Yo, I was like, can I, I had to run it back for a second. I'm like, how much of an asshole is this woman that as she's being execution style yeah. killed, she's still talking like, shit, calling him a pussy <laughs> yeah. like all the way to the end. Yeah. That's pretty gangster. I was like, what? I never fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like carry it to the end. She's like telling him to come close, come close. You're a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to let you know. Your mom's a bitch. Oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> and then he comes back out, gets an automatic rifle, uh, and finishes the job on both of them. Over snow? Over some snow shit or something else. And there was one of the neighbors heard some shit and they came over to the lady and she's all bleeding. Duh. And he goes, Hey, are you okay? <laughs> I'm like, yo, yo. What do you mean, bro? She just got shot the fuck up. What do you mean? Are you okay? Where are these people? And it's what part of America? This is like Pennsylvania or some shit. But he apparently goes back into the house yeah. and then he kills himself, <sighs> right? Yeah. So, and and the story to that, I yeah, I did obviously did not do that, but I did lose my shit a lot, and it's not helpful towards the customers because mm -hmm. when I get snappy. But how can I when one guy comes in says something shitty and leaves, and I still feel shitty? I'm an extra shitty for being shitty to the next customer because of what the last guy did. Yeah. And I catch myself doing that all man, the time. Man, you just never know what the fuck somebody else is going to do, man. You just got to leave yeah. that shit alone, man. You got to let people... When somebody says just words to you, let it just be words. It's not yeah. worth like losing your life over, you know? Yeah. This guy calls him... I think he calls him a scumbag. I think that's yeah. the adjective he said. You're a scumbag or something like that. And I'm like, that's it? That's all it took? 
Yeah. He, and that guy was like, uh, I think he was like a military vet too. I think he was in the Navy or some shit. But, you know, he obviously had weapons. I'll tell you, like, people kept telling me to get a gun. They're like, why don't you have a gun, man? Like, every time I post, like, these videos of mm-hmm. some bullshit, it's constantly from my friends, they're just like, get a gun, get a gun. I'm like, why? What mm. if I have never been in a situation where I have been actually held up or anything, but like, or had a gun pointed at me anywhere near my store, you know? Um, and that, that was the reality of it for as long as I've been there mm. and how shitty people can be. I've only had to deal with things with my hands, yeah. you know, or my words. Yeah. And when I would at least use my words first and have to just be sharp with my words with them, um, I could see that they were, like I said, they're just having a bad fucking day and blame it on this guy. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows. Yeah. You know, just go to the gas station and give it on me. And I think, and I just was not going to be that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, day, yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it's a very scary situation too. Cause yeah. like guns have always freaked me out just because of how lethal it is. Yeah. Right? I think what the the crazy thing about that video was, I was like, man, these movies are fucking fake as fuck. <laughs> you just get shot once and die. This bitch was talking shit. Yeah, she got fucking shot in the brain. Dude. And she was still talking shit like you, buzzy motherfucker. I'm like, like <laughs> damn girl, like what the fuck? This goes down as fuck. So maybe that's why. What like, have you ever heard of people committing suicide with two bullet holes in their head? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You think that's the maybe because <laughs> oh fuck. Yeah, it just didn't do the job. I had to do it twice. Yeah. Which is Maybe fucking that's nuts. Th- like, I, and you hear a lot of stories of people getting shot in the head and surviving too, right? Yeah. Could be, he didn't yeah. do a good enough job. To, he obviously missed the part of the brain where she yeah. was the shit talking part yeah. of the brain. <laughs> and she was going off on him. I'm like, damn, dude, this girl is nuts. Yeah. I wonder if she's the reason why that shit started popping off because she wouldn't. They were, they were going at He's like, you're a scumbag. No, screw you. You're a scumbag. Fuck you. So these people like also being in quarantine in close vicinity for oh, a whole year. Mine. Right. And yeah. then you're in a winter storm and all this shit. Fuck yeah, all that, course. dude. Like I'm, I always tell people, it's it's not worth it, man. Like, is it ever worth losing your life just to talk a little shit? Like, honestly, like, like the snow thing, I understand too. Like, I'm yeah. not the best. Like, I've lost my temper too. But when somebody brings a gun out, dude, that's when you get really Run. nice. Run or get I really nice. Ran. If he came out with a gun, I was like, hey, bro. Let me tell you something. God loves you. You know, <laughs> this is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Let me get some you. brownie points in before I go. <laughs> yeah, I, I would be. I would be like, oh shit, maybe I fuck with the wrong person. Yeah, but you just never know, man. Some people get really lucky. They get brave. They get to talk their shit, and they go to the bar and they talk, tell their friends about, oh, this person that they told off, and they yeah. get really hot about that shit. One day you're gonna run into the wrong fucking person. Okay, so there's this old man, right, that came to my store every day awesome guy with the beard little loose teeth mm-hmm. but he's a he's an engine he's building his own plane in his backyard oh wow that kind of hillbilly <laughs> he what looks the fuck? dirty all the time and he's building a plane he brought me his blueprints they're legit he's building a, he was an engineer you know um and i would cook him sous vide steak just and then he said it was the dopest so he took my sears all and like did some mm-hmm. custom like attachments to it so it's like fits better on my torch for mm. me um and one day this guy this meth head fucking he's constantly stealing from us but my mom has known him for the last 20 years from like out of high school right yeah and he just grew up just to this be his meth head he's still there and he keeps stealing shit and my mom keeps letting him do it and let him go until I was finally just had to tell him, like, dude, just we, my mom lets you come here all the time and you constantly steal and you steal and you steal. Like, I don't understand her, but I was just like, you should just not come and leave or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he tried to fight me <laughs> like and get in my face. Let it go. Whatever. Right. And then um, that man came by and I was visibly upset. You know, and he's like, what's wrong? You know, what's going on? You know him, that guy, you know, he came by again. He stole this beer and this gas or whatever. Mm-hmm. And let's just uh, call him Jim Bob. Uh-huh. You know? Jim Bob? You're calling about Jim Bob McClure. Obviously not his real yeah. name. I'm just making it up. You're talking about Jim Bob, that the one that, that steals from LA. He stole my property out of my garage. So if I see him, I'll kill him. Um, he's getting madder than me. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, you know, okay. He's like, no, I'm serious. I'm going to kill him. 
okay, you know, and I'm checking them out. He's like, mark my words. And he goes to his car. And then I hear him. He goes to the passenger side. He goes, look. And he pulls out an AK-47. Holy shit. I'll kill him. <laughs> and I was like, I believe you. <laughs> I will. <laughs> like, he, gets a, he gets a fucking uh, a dummy doll. He has a knife. <laughs> Just like this. Yes. Saws oh. the head off. Dude, <laughs> he looks like he's like a real life tome mater from Cars come to life. So lucky he's your friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So lucky he's on my side. Yeah. So it's like so those people are real too, man. And why would I want a gun around that shit too? Like I don't want to put a gun in my hand where I am not trained as this yeah. crazy guy over here. <laughs> How <laughs> literally I believe, yeah, you. I believe you. No, no. Like seriously. <laughs> Lay down on the floor so I can show you what he'll look like. Brains out here. Yeah. He, they, I hear, man, people fucking shoot each other out there, man. Oh, I believe the fucking meth head got shot in the chest. Yeah. <laughs> the meth head shot one of your fucking workers in his chest. My, my, <laughs> my mom will always be like, hey, I haven't seen you. Long time no see. Where you been? Jail? <laughs> she says that all the time. They're like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they were. <laughs> <laughs> fucking funny dude hey long time no see you go yeah. to jail <laughs> yep they say he's okay <laughs> she goes how's jail <laughs> how's it how's the jail they have a good food yeah. that's kind of nice yeah. i guess yeah because this kid fucking stabbed his stepfather in the fucking leg with a fork during thanksgiving oh you know or God, knife or dude you know it's not dude jail's no fucking joke man like a buddy of mine too he told me he told me the story where um he actually just came over the other day yeah and he was telling me the story about how when he was young because he's a very calm guy and i was asking him like dude because he's going through some shit right now and i'm like you have a very very calm demeanor like i wouldn't be able to handle the situation that you've been in he goes well i've you know i'm calm now but you know when i was younger because he, he he used to live i think he was in, grew up in flushings like new york mm. it's like i did a lot of like shit and you know from that i've kind of learned you know, how to like control my temper and, you know, just better manage these situations. And he was telling me the story about when he was in, so he went to jail, not prison, right? Yeah. So jail, and he was held up in there because he got into a fight with this dude that he fucking hated yeah. over like some racing shit. I don't know what happened, right? <laughs> yeah. But they got, they get, they don't se put you in separate jail cells, right? They do have separate, but they kind of put them all in the same one. Right. And so like he heard, back in the day that when you're in jail, you can't look like a pussy. So if you say you're going to do some shit, you have to do some shit. So he's sitting down and he's looking across at the, at the other guy that he got into a fight with, which is the reason why that they're yeah. locked up. And the guy looks over at him and he kind of like, Jedi boss, like kind of gives him a dirty look. And he says to him, he goes, what the fuck are you looking at? And he knew because somebody told him uh, ahead of time <laughs> that if you say something like that, you have to finish what you start. Yeah. So they start scrapping and fighting or whatever. And what happens is they get, he gets pushed all the way into another cell. And now he's already pissed and upset. So a few days go by or whatever. And he's like yelling at the cops now, my buddy. He's like, yo, when the fuck am I going to see a fucking judge? Get me out of this fucking jail cell. Yeah. And these cops are looking at him like, nope, just walking away. So when you're in jail, after like six days, uh, you get sent to prison. Oh, he would get, shit. he would, after six days, you don't see a judge. Until you see a judge, they don't hold you there for however what long. What the fuck? After six days, you get sent to Rikers. And so he's sitting here and he's getting super fucking upset. And then finally on the sixth day, he's like, yo, I got to see a judge today. If not, I have to go to Rikers Island. Yeah. And so he gets there and he goes, hey, officer, I would just like to apologize for the way that I was speaking to you. <laughs> you know, I was just upset. But may I please ask you, when can I see a judge? And he looks at him, he goes, hold on. Comes back, he goes, you'll see a judge in an hour. And he goes, the way that you speak to us and how you behave is really going to depend on how, how good your life is. So you're yeah. like, you apologize. <laughs> like, oh. I can't do prisoner jail, dude. Like, it's, it's fucking nuts. Yeah. And those COs too, like, they don't have an option of showing you mercy because the moment that you show, they show you mercy, you're, you, you'll get fucking ta taken over. And your convict number one million that went through. Exactly. Why would they give a shit? <laughs> like, my, like my buddy Chris, he was a CEO and he told yeah. this story too where, you know, he showed up one day and he had braids in his hair and they just kept on calling him Alicia Keys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all the prisoners kept on calling him Alicia Keys. Wow. You know, and they were just, you know, cracking jokes at him. He's yeah. like, oh, fuck, because, you know, you show any sign of weakness, they'll they'll take advantage of you. Yeah. And so they weren't going to give him shit until he apologized. And when he apologized, he softened up. They're like, okay, cool. You'll see a judge today. And then he didn't get, he didn't go to Rikers. Dude. I'm saying, I can't handle going to jail, man. I already know for a fact. I spent a night in jail and I'll tell you, fucking sucks what was it for 
Drunk Tank? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. And, well, here's the thing. They put me in a warm cell at first. And mm. I was like, all right. <laughs> then I was going to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. They wake, I, I actually didn't even get a chance to fall asleep. I was just sitting in there. Mm -hmm. And then they pull me on, put, this, this, put me in this freezing cold cell mm -hmm. with other, like, heroin addicts. <laughs> where they have to, like, detox and get clean. Yeah. And they put me in there with them. And then there was a running TV of the the city like jail system in English for 30 seconds, then Spanish 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And it repeated for eight hours. Oh my God, I would lose my fucking mind. I, yeah, dude. And I was in there and this thing was blasting for eight hours straight in loop. Like, That's and, inhumane. Yeah. And I was like sitting there, like, why am I here? Like, who? Mm -hmm. I didn't like. Uh, I was like, I, I, I thought I was just put in that jail, and I, I, I didn't think I did anything wrong. But yeah, man, they threw me in there. It was just like there was like other drunk people in there too, and it was warm. Yeah, <laughs> I ended up in this cold tank, and then what the fuck? Until fucking, I got out. Like they gave me a sack lunch, and I was, I was hungry, but something about it smelled funny, and mm -hmm. it was just disgusting. Yeah, yeah. So I gave it to the other guy. I just drank the milk. Mm. And when I was getting out and getting my clothes back and all my shit, the officer was handing me my wallet. He goes, do you want your mug shot? And I'm like, no. He goes, are you sure? It'll remind you every time you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> I'm almost ready to cry already. Yeah. <laughs> What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> just put my clothes on and I got out. And oh my gosh. And then just to see the sun and out of there was such a relief. But my fucking phone was dead. Oh I had my to go God. find some payphone and call somebody to pick me up. That's God fucking damn. crazy. That guy just had to dig one in right at the end. Oh man. Yeah. I, I, it was unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I learned a lesson though. Man, it, I will never fucking go back. <laughs> well, dude, man, just regular jail. Like, but you heard, um, was it Ahmad Arbery? You have you heard that story? Um, uh, the guy who got shot running. No, it was the kid who had um, he had a, he went to jail because somebody said he stole a backpack. Ah, uh, I I know that the yeah. story. Yeah, and fucking, he went to Rikers. The, yeah, he went to fucking to Rikers for I think it was three years, three years for something that he didn't even fucking do. Which blew my fucking mind because yeah. I can only imagine what it's like to go to jail for something you did not do at yeah. Rikers Island, like one of the craziest penitentiaries out there for something you didn't fucking do. And I went in with something I did and I had time to think yeah. about my the consequences of my actions yeah. and not want to go. If I didn't do anything, yeah, I'd just go crazy. You would like lose. You would lose your fucking yeah. mind. And it was crazy because Jay Z, um, he obviously put a lot of press on it, and yeah. then you know dropping all the charges and everything else like that, and his life was going to get together. But he had all these demons inside him that he couldn't get rid of, and he killed himself. Yeah, which fucking blows my mind, dude. His like his whole past and his history is really sad, right? So his dad wasn't around. His yeah. mom was, I believe, his mom was like a meth head or a crackhead or some shit like that. Mm. So you know he obviously didn't grow up in the best issue. So he was a crack baby. And then when his father found out that he was in jail, yeah, he didn't care. He was like, oh, he's in Rikers? He goes, he probably deserved it. And kind of just, you know, left him to, to stew in there. It was, it was pretty bad. And you hear about this kid's story all because somebody accused him of something that he didn't fucking do. I cannot go to jail. I spent one night. Yeah. I spent one night. And my dad was in for 14 months. That's crazy. And he came back, like I said, just different different yeah. yeah um i don't know it it it's not somewhere you want to go and trust me it's not like a i don't know a plaque thing on your thing i i don't like telling people i even went to jail yeah. <laughs> you know but um yeah it's it's a lesson learned um, obviously because you have a lot of time to think but 14 fucking months that one night i spend there and my dad had already passed by this time i was yeah. just thinking fuck you know just about his situation and not ever understanding until i experience one day you know yeah, you kind of lose your humanity a little bit it's not like they treat you like a human being they treat you like chattel yeah right and then you have to figure out this game like i had a business partner he went to jail for a year and like he was telling me what it was like in there and it fucking sucks dude like yeah you, you lose your humanity like when you lose your humanity you you, you i would lose my sanity 
I, the idea of freedom is really comforting. Like the idea that you can choose to leave whenever you want. Yeah. That is something that we all take granted for. Like when, once that's taken away, you start to realize like how, how, how fucking your whole world just starts to spiral. Yeah. It's like, I don't have a choice if I could leave. Or even the decisions that are suddenly made for you. Yeah. You don't know. What you eat. Yeah. When you sleep. When yeah. you wake up. Like, fuck, man. Is this how it's going to be? Like, I, can't, I, can't, I can't imagine what that shit's like. Yeah. Yeah. And so when my dad got out, he just wanted to be free. Mm. And he did a lot of shit just on his own freedom. Because he hadn't yeah. experienced it in such, such a long time. Yeah. But he went overboard. I'll tell you. Went yeah. crazy. Yeah. For sure. I mean, my one of my... um. Church Chung's back in the day, he was he went to jail because he was uh, jacking cars. Yeah. And then um, when he came out, he told me that in, in the first week, or was it the first night? I can't remember. It's been a while now. But he heard some dude getting um, raped, like getting butt raped, <sighs> just fucking muffled and screaming. And I'm like, uh. hell fucking no. I'm like, how did you survive? He's like, same thing all Asian dudes. You got to gang up. And I, he was like a big buff dude. So I just ganged up and then I, you know, I stayed deep in that yeah. click and then I just, and I got out after and he was in jail for like three years or some Jeez. shit for like yeah. robbing a bunch of cars. Can't do it, man. Yeah, my, I think one of these producers I worked with, this dude was just yoked and jacked up just because he was, when he was getting sentenced, he knew he was going to be there for like 90 days or something. Mm. Yeah, and so he got jacked just, and then from what he said, he was just like, all he had to do was just be like, hey, I'm just doing my time. I'm working out. Don't mess with me. Yeah. And as far as, like the Washington State prisons, I guess that's as much as a, he got by then. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, our friend who went to jail, she she got really fat because she says like, yeah. if you if you got fat, they don't mess with you. And, <laughs> yeah. So she got she gained a, an, an exponential amount of weight, and uh, then when she went to jail, that's why she got so big. If you're skinny, they pick on you. I guess they pick on you, or you look cute, or whatever. You're trying to look uh, as ugly as possible, or like unattractive, you know, in the traditional sense. So mm. she got really slovenly and that's what suggested to her before she went in yeah it was funny because she went to a satellite prison which is basically a college campus <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, i'm like the fuck you made it sound like you went to like you did a hard time bitch like you went to a fucking satellite prison dude yeah the satellite prison is almost it's like rehab wow well i'm glad that we want we want people to go to rehab though right to be yeah. rehabilitated i would hope our friends don't get punished that I harshly know. but the way she talked about it she, i was like oh, oh it's like it's a fucking hard shit i remember she didn't want to tell me where she was going i was like where are you going and i, and I looked it up i was like wait you're going to a satellite prison bitch it's not even fucking prison what the fuck you talking about but she wanted to make it sound like it was super hard or some shit i'm like you're weird dude i would if i was i would tell people like i'm going to satellite prison i got lucky yeah you know i was I'm like, like i learned a lesson and yeah i'm doing <laughs> you give it up <laughs> well guys that wraps up this episode of the genius brain podcast uh, you can find Ed at Ed Park VP and Genius oh. Brains every Thursdays and Sundays. Hope you guys enjoyed that conversation. You guys can listen to us anytime you want, and we'll catch you all next time. Peace. Peace.